East Coast. Mr. Chris Montana just joined us. So he'll come in in two seconds. So let me. Let me see if I can get to the live. And I'm testing it now on here to make sure we can hear each other. Mr. Chris Montana. How you doing? Thank you for joining hey, us. Chris. Um, the lighting is not so great in here. And <laughs> the uh, I understand how that goes. There, <laughs> I understand how that goes. Yeah, maybe if I get right up in there, it'll see it. But there you go. We'll see a lot better now. Yeah. Well, if I open the blinds, I'll be back lit. I always thought there was something, you know, my wife is white, and back in the day when we would take pictures, it would always adjust to her, and I would just be darkness. And I, <laughs> I always thought there was something going on with that. I was like, you know, somebody filed a lawsuit or something. It's like, a lot of these cameras, like, they, like they just black me out. Anyway, oh, man. I think I can handle it, though. How y'all doing? Oh, uh, we doing pretty good. good. I'm testing out the uh, the live right now. It sure wines is live and wind down Wednesday. Uh, so okay, uh, we're doing all this like the Facebook stuff. You gotta remember, I'm, <laughs> I'm simpleton when it comes to. Oh, uh, hey, we all are, and it's live right <laughs> now. I'm clicking it. Okay, it's going well, so I'm going to shut that off. So I don't have to worry about it. So I think I've done what I needed to do. I clicked the button that was on Facebook. Yep, you're good. You're good. <laughs> so I'm going to turn this uh, Afro Beats down. And we're going to get going, brother. Awesome, awesome. Because I don't need the mask on. Yeah, right? It took mine off, too. <laughs> you just get used to it these days. That's right. Walking around right. with it. So have you brothers met? Uh, you brothers haven't met officially yet. I don't know. First time. I don't think so, no. So, first of all, for those that's going to be joining us on Facebook and those who don't know, we have the illustrious Mr. Chef Nelson of Alamar and uh, Kitchen, Oakland, and Sober Mesa, um, who is our featured chef of the day, and he has a lot of stuff going on, uh, which had us bring on Mr. Chris Montana of the Nord Craft Spirits out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, who is becoming world-renowned right now in his efforts to rebuild uh, Minneapolis as well, and uh, being the first brother to own his own distillery in the United States, which he goes back, which he doesn't advertise that, but I got to say it. Um, and then we also have Mr. Kevin John of Island John Vodka, as award-winning uh, Uncle Richie Reserve, uh, Richie Reserve. Uh, new Richie Reserve, I'm sorry, New Richie Reserve. Change the name on me, but it's still the same good ultra premium vodka. And the guava uh, infused uh, apple guayave Island John vodka as well. So the focus of today is first starting off with Chef Nelson and what he's doing in the city of Oakland, bringing and, and, let, and let him introduce himself and who he's about and what he does and, and, and what he's doing this Friday as well. So. Chef, it's all on you, and I'm going to put you That's on the spotlight. Good. Um, it's an honor to be part of this. I think it's, it's important for all of us, especially people of the black community, to get together and show our faces, tell our stories. Um, and Facebook is uh, and Zoom are great platforms for this, so I'm really honored to be here. I'm uh, Nelson Herman, is that pronunciation my last name. I'm Dominican nationality, uh, born and raised in New York City. I've been out here in Oakland for the last 10 years. I uh, teach my wife who's raised out here. Um, and I'm, I'm loving it. I love the community. I love the community um, feeling of being here. Like the way people get together. You know, even owning a restaurant. A lot of us own restaurants who are black get together occasionally, just talk and go over things and help each other and support each other. You know, and that's the beautiful thing about being here. Um, I own two places uh, Alamar Kitchen and Bar is one. Um, my seafood restaurant is uh, most established. Uh, we just hit six years a couple months ago on May 1st. Um, I opened a new place called uh, Soda Mesa, which in uh, English translation means over the table. So it's an Afro-Latino cocktail bar uh, with tacos, it's really fantastic. Um, and there we're going to be definitely featuring, I'm already drinking this right now, the North of Joe, <laughs> absolutely delicious, so I've um, been sipping on it all day, so it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Adam John too has 
delicious stuff. Uh, really excited to have you guys in our bar and uh, support you guys too. Thank but, you, um, absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, doing doing amazing things, you know, been been always building community. We're doing unique meals. Uh, we just did three hundred meals for the homeless today, uh, through World Central Kitchen. Uh, we're opening for service right now too, so it's just on and on, man. Once shelter in place here, we close now for two days and just went straight to work. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, so it's been it's been good. It's been uh, it was definitely a struggle, but uh, our community is definitely lifting us up, which is amazing, especially the black community. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, this brother, and, and, and for those who don't know, this brother is very modest, um, and, and that's the way most of us should be, but I, I'd have to say he, he's becoming a, a, a very sought after, not just for the food at his restaurant, but his catering and his philanthropy in the community when, when non-profits call on us, and, uh, and just when, when actually profits call on us and want some really good food, <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> The oxtails on hit. That's my lady's favorite. You know, it's his favorite. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so it's like it's it's and it's a, it's a whole bunch of good places to get oxtails from in Oakland. That's that's let's, let's put that out there. I'm not you know, poo pooing on nobody right. else's, but that's her favorite. Um, <laughs> and uh, the drinks. So your bartenders are always on hit. Um, I met some of the bartenders from Super Mesa. Um, and, what, and, and for those who don't know, Super Mesa, he just opened that one up right before the the the, the the, the COVID the pandemic and yeah. it was literally lines around the door before the, the pandemic hit. Literally, yeah. even when things were starting to shut down, it was the only place that still had a line outside and they had to literally shut it down, shut wow. it down to yeah, keep people from trying to come. Tough. So it was heartbreaking, but it was, it was the, one of the be best back. starts I've seen of a restaurant. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. And the cocktails. So let's, let's get to, let's get to the cocktails. Help us help us understand your philosophy and how you because you some people have a, a bar manager which you do but you take take an active role and yeah in in what's created behind that bar you have very talented mixologists as well and you take their input and that, that have them create but you take a very active help help us understand your philosophy for for both of your restaurants and what brought us to have these other guys on this on this uh yeah yeah, yeah. This. Uh, well. I think number one for me is making sure that there's a story being told, you know, with, with the product, with the cocktails, uh, the spirit behind it that we're supporting, um, also with the food and how it coincides with the cocktails. Um, so that's my main thing is just making sure there's a story behind it. It's just not just an experiment, you know. Um, there has to be a deeper meaning to, to the cocktail. There has to be a memory too, you know. That, that's what, in our culture, you already know as, as black men not the experience. and women, it's about the experience and actually putting the love into the, the actual product, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And the love is that story you're, you're telling, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that that's why I come along. I have a great staff, great team, I have a great <coughs> wonderful experience, but we want to give the cocktails a little kind of culinary technique, which makes it different. Because a lot of people, when they go to a black bar or a restaurant, they don't expect that, right? They don't expect that extra level of, uh, of storytelling. It's just like, get your hand in coke and all that. It's more than that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, exactly. Using great product like, like Denord and, and Alan John and telling the story behind that and what we're trying to sell too with, with our culture. You know, being Dominican, Afro Latino, definitely with Alan John, that there, there's a deeper connection there, being Caribbean Island boys. Uh, so, showcasing those tropical flavors, it's a big thing. Uh, with Denord, they're, they're showcasing that history behind you being from New Orleans and now from Minnesota, being one of the only black, you know spirit makers out there and really pushing that forward you know and your product speaks to the volume of it how delicious it is you know it's to the next level just like you would get for a great small bass gin you know um monkey monkey 47 is one of my favorite gins in the world <laughs> um and this I have a uh, bottle right here <laughs> it's like right up there bro it is and the price point is great so congratulations on that and then with Alan John too, what, what I love about it is it's natural flavors. It's, it tastes natural. It tastes like you actually put the love in infusing it the vodka, not just right. doing artificial flavors. Right. You know? uh, and you can tell, you can feel that Alan vibe right away. You know, so it takes you like you're at the beach, you're at in Jamaica, Trinidad, uh, in the Dominican Republic, in Cuba. It takes you away and it takes you away from all the craziness. And that, that's yeah. what we do as storytellers, right? We try to take people away from all the crazy things in the world happening. 
and they can still good, they can still at home. Uh, bring them to uh, to kind of cloud nine, say. Saying so, uh, you know that's our approach to, to consoles and food and both Sermes and Almar. One showcasing our raw diaspora as black men. You know we, we come from all over the world, but definitely Africa is, is our main focus in our where we all came from. But we have spread out so many around the world. Uh, we want to show that there, there's black people that speak Spanish, like myself, speak French, uh, patois. You know, oh, yeah. some black you know speak, have an English accent. And we, we all as Americans get tripped out by that, right? Like, yeah, but it, still, it, it's real. Yeah. You know, this this black people speak Chinese. You know, yeah. what I mean? like, so right. the is that we're, we're out in the world. And we're not just stuck here in, in the states. Like, we're doing big things everywhere else too, and trying to tell our story and go back and tribute a tribute to our ancestors and our roots. Beautiful, beautiful. So <clears throat> that, that brings me because we have. I, I mean, I know he has some drink. He's already drinking. I don't know what you, if you guys are drinking yet because it is six o'clock uh, where you're at, uh, Kevin and, and Chris. It's probably about four or five. No, I'm in California right now. Oh, so yeah, it is three. Uh, so you still yeah, so it's three o'clock and I got kids out there. So if at some point if you see me looking around, it's because my door keeps open because my kids keep coming. <laughs> yeah, give me three hours, man. My kids will be asleep and yeah, I'll pull my up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So let's go to. Mr. Kevin Johnson, since you're later on the clock, tell us okay. a little bit about who you are. I think we've had both of you guys on at different points, but help people understand Island John Vodka and you in, 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 in a snapshot. All right, cool. Well, as you mentioned, my name is Kevin John, co-founder of Island John Vodka with my father, Levi John. Um, really, the quickest story, man, is my, my dad brought, brought the project to me. You know, he was working on something in Europe, and... Um, I uh, I basically told him like, look, why don't we uh, why don't we get things going here in the U.S. You know, U.S. I think vodka consumption probably about I want to say thirty eight to forty percent of the pie when it comes to spirits, right? So I was like, let's get it, let's get it cracking over here. So um, basically, crash course the industry for about two two and a half years before we got into market, man. Just really kind of learning the whole the stillman aspect of it the raw material, why people dream up, the water source that, you know, the product comes from, like the the, the mountains of Latvia and the hills of Colorado and all this other <laughs> stuff. I'm like, all right, all right. But when you think about it, the water source is super important. You know what I mean? We're only 40%. The other 60% is the water. So the way you treat the water, right. process the water, you get it is what's going to help create that smoothness on the back end for your product, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but yeah, yeah, man, just really kind of getting down into a industry that is super old, you know, dates back to the 1920s or even, hey, even before that when everyone was um, was bootlegging, right? But, um, but uh, you know, getting involved in a project with my dad has always kind of been a dream come true, right? Doing a family thing for us to, you know, you know, get our feet wet and, and, you know, get in the trenches and see how we could, you know, build something for our family, man. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the family, you know, and, and the legacy that you're going to leave, not only with your family, but with the people that you encounter and touch, right, every yeah. day. So, um, uh, so yeah, man, I got, you know, super excited about that. And every step was like a confirmation that, you know what, you're moving in the right direction, you're moving in the right direction. Then when we finally got out to market in 2018, I'm like, 10 accounts is dropping our lap, man. And I'm like, man, it can't be that easy, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I was like, I got you, bro. Keep going. <laughs> but um, but uh, the guava, man, it really opened doors for us. Um, and our, that two-year ramp up that I shared with you, my dad called me up like, Kevin, what do you think about getting guava in a bottle, man, you know? Uh, in Trinidad, you know, I grew up with two barbecues in the backyard, and, you know, I just had a nostalgic moment with, you know, because down in the Caribbean, as you know, uh, Nelson, that there's openings in the house in the houses so that breeze comes in, right? Yeah. Um, so with the guava fruit, when it's during, in season, man, that thing permeates like crazy, right? So it's like, <laughs> it's like natural and organic, you know what I mean? Um 
um, for breeze in your house, if you will, right? So, <laughs> so, um, so we just had that nostalgic moment, man. I said that that's probably one of your better ideas, man, on this process. And um, we we went into R and D with it right away. And um, so what we do, we created fresh puree, the actual fruit. We let it sit in 190 proof ethanol for about seven days. Um, let it permeate and, and capture all the oils and aroma of the product, right? And then over the next three to four days, it goes through a filtration, resting, and um, uh, filtering process, right? Um, to get it, and then we bottle it at an 80 proof, right? We bottle it at 80 proof. So um, most flavor profiles, which I think a lot of the larger companies have started to kind of capture that, that 80 proof on, on a uh, flavor product. Um, but, but you know, typically you will get about 35, 70%, you know what I mean, on the, on the flavor product. Um, on our new Richard Reserve, man, I mean, we went on platinum with all of that stuff. So we, we were very particular about the product that we wanted to put. We, want, we didn't just want to give you a cool looking bottle, but we also wanted to make the content of it equally or greater than what the presentation was, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, especially, you know, um, where people are looking for quality stuff, man, I mean, um, I, Tito's and your other American brands are probably exemptions of that, you know what I mean? But, you know, um, I feel as minorities, man, we're always a step behind. So we gotta, we always gotta put that little extra love into anything that we do to get that respect and attention, right? So um, putting a good package in on itself was 50% of the battle. And then going out and, you know, really focusing on the juice and making sure that we're putting a quality product on the new Richard Reserve, it winning the medals that it did was very surprising to us. Um, but, um, you know, we, we, we researched and did some, you know, OJ techniques and one of those things that I think they start to use technology now, like a quantum, um, compressor or something that they use in, in distilleries now where it helps just kind of continue to push out impurities and stuff like that. But we actually rest ours for about 20 days, right? Continue to sit in cold. We added, uh, um, coconut fiber husk to the filtration process just to build character into it as well. So, um, so yeah, man, a lot of it was just very intentional of what we wanted to do and what we wanted to put in the bottle. I feel like we're still not there yet, you know what I mean, as far as perfecting our vodka, but, you know, we're we're, we're close. We're close. So. That's a bold statement if somebody has a very, very good vodka. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I haven't perfected it yet. Some folks can't touch it. He's like, okay. And then, and and we understand that in the in the vodka again, like you said, it's it's a very large percentage of alcohol consumption in the U.S. So yeah, you have vodkas depending on what it's made from and how it's made. It's almost as is you know. Of course, I got to come back to wine a little bit. It's always it, it's it's kind of like wine. You could have it depends on the maker and what they're looking for in the front end, the back end, in the mid palate, right. what, what what flavors they want to bring out of it. And it could be from the same grain. It could, it could be both, you know, corn, it could be both, you know, uh, you know, potato vodka. It, 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 potatoes can be from the same place, but it depends on the maker and how they do it. And Absolutely. Like you said, the water you use and everything else you use. Absolutely. And how you filter it. Yeah. So, yeah, so I like to tell people too, like, what's, what makes your vodka different than other vodkas? I'm like, well, What's most important to you when you eat bread? You like the bottom crust, the top crust, or the middle? The middle. I'm like, well, we focus on getting the middle, which which is called the heart of the product, right? And that's what we focus on, right? I'm, I can't I can't speak for other brands to say that's what they focus is on, right? But that's what our focus is on. So the the part that you're going to love and fall in love with. Okay. All right. All right. Good. And now we have Mr. Chris Montana of Denor Craft Spirits of Minneapolis, um, where we have a range of his his products. He does is is the Trois Vodka, Fitzgerald Gin, Mixed Blood Whiskey, is Apple Liqueur, and my favorite, the Frida, the Coffee Liqueur. Cafe Frida. Cafe Frida. <laughs> That's my favorite. She's a bad woman. Yes, she is, <laughs> and, and, and an educator at that. So it's about an educator. So I'll, I'm I'll be Absolutely. quiet and let you talk about you, and then. And, and let you go. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I, I, one of the best things that's been happening to me over the past uh, couple of years is I keep getting in, we'll call this a room, I keep getting in rooms like this. Um, when I first started the morgue in 2013, um, 
I didn't see many people um, who look like me uh, in the industry anyway. Mm-hmm. I didn't know just how few there were. I mean, as far as black people, they were, on the owner side, there were none. Uh, but there were a smattering in macro, but, but certainly not in micro. So, you know, it's it, it, it's fantastic for me to see, you know, brothers out, you know, making moves and not just not just being there and saying support my product because you know I'm a black man but putting out a good product absolutely that's very important and the fact that the the black man doing it is is, is secondary to the fact that what's in the bottle what's on the plate is false and that I think is what we lead with you know you can't look at our marketing and have any idea of you know my skin tone Um, but what I always wanted to focus on was what was in the bottle. So my path to uh, distilling is non-linear. I don't think anyone's is. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, I'm, I'm an English major, lawyer by training, practice law for a little bit, used to work in Congress for a little bit. Um, basically, I did enough things to know I didn't want to. And what I did want to do was be my own boss. I wanted to build something for my family. And, you know, growing up, uh, broken America, eating government cheese, you know, that's, that's not where I wanted to be at. Being a father is the most important thing in my life, and one of the jobs that I knew I had was I needed to make make a place so that way my boys didn't have the same kind of childhood that I had. And so, you know, that's now somewhere in there I thought you know that Denard was actually going to make a profit. Um, <laughs> you know, that, you know, that, we're, we're getting there, right? It, it's a grind. Is Sure you oh yeah, but you but you built something a lot of folks haven't built, and people don't understand the cost of doing what you have done. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it, it's it, not big for big. I mean, access to capital is a big deal. I mean, oh yeah, huge, us, uh, huge. Doing this, uh, you know, when we started, we got a sixty thousand dollar loan from a community development organization. Bankers look at me and like, you don't look like it, so, um, and. <laughs> So it was hard for us to get money. Sixty thousand dollars, by the way, for anyone who's watching this thing. They're dropping a nickel. For real. Not enough money. No. Uh, just save yourself. If that's as much money as you have, go invest it in almost literally anything. <laughs> it's not <laughs> hard for you. Not you might as well just set it on fire. Uh, I think everybody on here would agree with you on that one. Right? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't catch that. I think everybody on here would agree with you 100% on that one. For, yeah, for right, all right, of the ventures right. that we've done. <laughs> but when we started, I was still working as an attorney. So I was doing that during the day. Um, and, you know, five, six o'clock would come around. And then I'd get in the car, drive over to the distillery, take off my jacket, put the coveralls on so I wouldn't mess up my pants and my shirt, and then work at the distillery at night. Uh, and that also coincided with my, youngest, with my oldest son being born. So. At some point, I knew that wasn't going to be sustainable. You know, as the boy was getting older, he knew when dad was gone. And so I had to make a choice, and I chose a distillery, and I, that was the end of my legal career. And I, I am so glad that that's the move that I made, that, that we made, my wife and I. Mm-hmm. Uh, we started out with a, a vodka, La Trois de Nord vodka. The Minnesota state motto is La Trois de Nord, Star of the North. Uh, and so we started out with La Trois de Nord vodka. Uh, using corn from the farm that my wife grew up on. And we progressed from there. Obviously, you know, for a distillery, everything's unaided at first. So we started with the vodka, and we wanted to have vodka flavor to it, you know, smooth yet not completely bland. Um, and so we did well with that, once a lot of rewards with that. Came out with our Fitzgerald gin, which I take a lot of pride in. It took a long time to get that gin right, and it is a pain in the ass to this day. <laughs> uh, every batch because it's a macerated gin and the smallest little difference in the moisture content and the mm-hmm. wow. and the entire thing off and so every batch of gin that we make we make the entire batch we split it into about 10 different parts and then we have to sit down you know it takes a couple of days of combining it to figure out how do we which parts do we put in for this particular batch it's not as easy as just taking what comes off the cell Mm-hmm. It's not a vapor infused gin, so it's not really done when it comes off the so. cell. Um, mm-hmm. You know, gin generally needs about a month to get right, and the flavor will move on you a lot. So oh, can, when it comes off the cell, uh, you know, it, it just tastes like everything hits you in the face. Boom. And it's also 80% alcohol. 
Um, but once you give it about three days, it's 75% of where it's going to go. And then after about a month, it's 100% of where it's going to go. And that's when you finally know if it's worth it. So it's like parking the car, you make a couple of moves and you wait a month. <laughs> which is nothing compared to making whiskey. Which is like making a couple of moves yeah. and waiting two, three years to find oh, yeah. that right. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I've tried to do with the Nord, and once I found out, I went to a convention in 2015, and I walked in, I was the only person of color there. Not a black man, but a person of color. About a thousand people in the room. And this is uh, the American Grass Beer Association. And once I found out just how bad the diversity situation was in our industry, that's when the focus of the Nord shifted a little bit. And we were always about making quality, but we want to be about making quality and open doors. So what I'm hoping is that some of my competitors will start at my place, learn the trade, go off and start their own thing, because there shouldn't be so few of us doing this. So I've no. tried to make that happen through the American Craft Spirits Association, and they have some partnerships now uh, to get some new people into the industry, which I'm very proud of. Um, and we also do it in our shop. We're the, uh, about 50% uh, minority employees, and uh, at last check, we were 84% female. Uh, and, that's, and we do that on purpose. That's not to say that if you have brown skin, I'm going to hire you, or if you're a woman, I'm going to hire you, but we make sure people know that they are one. And that alone makes people come through the door. And, you, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of our staff. They're the only reason why we're still around is to fix that. And um, hopefully people like what we make. But, you know, I always say, is that, look, Gin, I, I put my heart and soul into that gin because I want it because we're not, we never put anything artificial in anything. It's always about real flavors. And I can put all the heart and soul into it and somebody can take a sip of it and say, you know, it's not for me. And I don't take that personally. Because, you know, people, nobody can tell you what's good. What's good is what you like. So we say drink good booze. If you're going to drink alcohol, you might as well, you know, if you're going to put this in your body, you might as well be calm. Uh, whatever it is. And so if you like what we make, then fantastic. We'd love to have your support. And if you don't, that's great. Please go out and try to find some of these other makers who are also putting their heart and soul into the bottle. Um, and insofar as anyone who is watching this is able to support some of these black-owned brands, uh, they need your support. Uh, because it's, it is a rough road. Kevin, I have, I have a lot of respect because I have people come to me talking about making vodka as they want us to make a vodka for them. And I explained to them that vodka is the most difficult category to do anything in, period. I don't care what you are making, I don't care what kind of alcohol you are producing, there is nothing in the world harder than, than vodka. Full stop. There is no place to hide. If you mess it up, everybody's going to know what you messed up. Yeah. There are huge players in the market spending a lot of money to make you right. think that what's in that shiny bottle is any good. And it objectively is not, but, but they've got the money out there, they've got the advertising, and you've got an uphill battle. So if you can find a way to make a way in that industry, then you are obviously a person of talent. So I have all the respect in the world for you. And, uh, anybody else crazy enough to get into, into that sphere and good enough to do it well? So I, I hope that, that people will get out and support these brands. You know, uh, Chef Nelson, what you're doing and supporting these brands is, is so key. It's and, huge. And I need to make it to I need to make it to your spot uh, spots. Uh, <laughs> uh, Please do. Uh, it, it's it's so great for me to see people being successful, uh, being themselves, and you know I, I I'm just honored to be among you. Yeah. And, and I want to say thank you too because he carries uh, almost all of our wines for, uh, yeah. from you know that's, that's wines and he loves them you know oh yeah so I love alcohol. yeah <laughs> he, he, he teaches customers right that's why they keep coming back so yeah. and let's talk about Friday so this Friday he's gonna be featuring our wines as well as your liquor so let's talk a little bit about what you what you're doing on Friday yeah so Friday we're doing a um, Think of it as a, as a pop-up for the, for the other place, Soda Mesa. Um, just letting people know that your products are here. Uh, you can get the whole bottle or just get a nice little uh, glass or a cocktail uh, with, with the product. Um, and just, just educating people that there, there are black makers out there, spirit makers. Um, there are winemakers who are beautiful women in Kenya making beautiful wine. Um, there's a wonderful black distributor out here in Oakland. You know, like, well, we're out here, and we need to uh, 
let people, people know and educate them on that, you know, especially our own people. But sometimes we, we get kind of uh, stuck in, in all our marketing scheme that mm-hmm. is always on us with the Hennessy's and, and the Ducey's and right. Tito's and Grey Goose out of the world. Um, you know, let, let's, we need to support each other and look at each other, you know, and, per, and represent each other, ourselves and each other out there. So uh, that's what we're definitely going to do. Uh, we're going to have some food specials too. Um, and talk about those. Let us know what you want to have on Friday. Yeah, yeah with the Fitzgerald, yeah. <laughs> so what, what food special is going to have and what are the, the, the cocktails that you that you specialty cocktails? I know you always have like one or two specialties. I don't know if you've already created them or not, but. Yeah. So the, the Alan John, for sure, the guava, uh, just the soda water that you had me take was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm going to infuse some mint in there too, uh, some fresh mint from my garden. I have a spearmint garden that really goes fantastic with the guava. Um, and we have a beautiful bitters. It's a uh, clove bitters that we created. So giving it even that extra Caribbean feel and, and okay. touch to it, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, with the Fitzgerald doing a beautiful banana gimlet, I think nice. it would be fantastic. You know, like, again, going back to my roots and, and our um, African and everything else. I love this man. Just that little touch, <laughs> you know? Um, you don't need to do too much to it. That's, that's the great thing about your products. You don't need to touch it up so much. You know, it's like cooking in California, the ingredients speak for themselves. Um, you just have to do a few techniques and tell your story and you're good to go. You know, so that's going to be great. And then I want to do another event next Saturday featuring your products where we even go to the next level where we'll have a walker bar. Uh, we'll create six different cocktails using both your products. We'll have uh, some collateral. Hopefully Chad can be there and uh, tell the story and have some music. We want to have a live band too out there. And just represent, do something for our people, do something positive for our people, even during this pandemic, and just have a good time. So, and, and just so people understand, we know we can't have inside dining and all that stuff, but you can come pick up stuff and have a festive time yeah. doing it. You yeah. know, and come and come enjoy makers of color. So, exactly. And like you said, as a, so everybody knows about cheer wines and. We don't talk about this much, uh, and, and you'll see if you're on Facebook Live, you'll see like the WS distributions up there. So we're, you know, we, we talk about it every now and then, but we're the only black distributor that does wine, beer, and liquor in California that I know of. Okay, and no one's challenged that at this point. There's other other distributors that do one or the other, um, and we focus on makers of color, women, and locals. So. And these are two of the major liquors. The, the, the liquor car- that we carry is Island John and Denord, um, right at this point. So our thing is we want to be able to promote brothers like this that do great work, great makers, and high quality. Um, and we're getting hits from all, all across California right now for different stores and um, just made two new placements in L.A., um, with some of the liquors as, as well and some more up here so it's in in chef has come along and you loved it you know because you have to pass the test of the chef or the buyer or the, and and I had to go through every last one with chef it wasn't like okay oh, oh, oh brother okay I, no he tasted them took his time like okay all right all right okay and you know I told him he's gonna take most of them and he did so I like to say thank you for that, and and, and thank you, brothers, for making a product, product <laughs> that makes it easy to sell. Yeah, you know, the fact that yeah, you the thing. did you have color was a bonus. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, even to touch into to Kevin what you said about and Chris about it has to be quality. You know, with each other, we try to always, you know, try to sell it always black owned, so you support us. We're black men. You you're one of the same. Like buying yeah. me, but it has to be more than that. You have to tell a story. You have to have the product has to be delicious. Even with my food, it has to be good. Your food isn't good. Why? Why are they going to support us? Just because we're black? Yeah, you know, it, uh, it, yeah. That's that's a, and that's a strong point, man. Because I tell people when especially when I go to on premise accounts, I'm like, don't buy just because I'm black. Buy because I'm good. I just happen to be black, which yeah. is an incentive for you to buy, right? But buy because the product is quality, man. You know, it's all just don't buy because I'm black, man, because that doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. You know, if if if, if the product is bad, let me know so I can go back to the drawing board and, and get it. Back. Exactly. Yes. You know I mean? so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it, it makes us all better, right? When we do get good feedback. Exactly. You know, constructive to go back and fix the things and get better. Mm-hmm. And that's a constant process. That's what other makers do. 
when they come up with other products, they, they see what sells, what doesn't. You see them pull it and they make something else. You know, but sure. you know, we don't have those kind of those kind of wallets. You know, so we got to make it right the first time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so before I get to making something, because I have I, I put something together. Yeah, I see that. Too. Yeah, that's just cute. You know, he can join us, little man. Um, before I get to making something, I put together for all of you guys. Uh, you know, I want people out there to understand. Go to Alamar this Friday, and you can pick up a bottle. You can actually get a drink to taste it first, and then you can pick up a bottle of Island John or either Dendor Liquors, um, and it's the first place you're going to be able to taste it and buy it by the bottle in the bay so make sure you come through now we can't have a happy hour without a drink I know it's a little early some places but uh, I decided to do a fruit punch in honor of us you know for me I like I like you know our red kool-aid I ain't gonna lie but I want to make a classy fruit punch a tropical fruit punch so since I have the makers on here which can go kind of awry with my mixology because they probably are both better than I am <laughs> and then well, chef being a mixologist and chef you know you know call me out if you want to let's have this discussion let's be real because I'm gonna do just what I like a little bit all right so it's a fruit punch of course the apple liqueur mm-hmm Apple Guayave, none of those, cherry bitters, and my uh, secret sauce, blood orange syrup. Nice, nice. So I'm not going to use anything typical like a Malibu or any of that, okay? I was going to have, have two different Marcino cherries, but I'm like, you know what, let's, let's not do the cherries. So, what I'm going to do, this is the one and, I can read because I'm getting old, y'all. One and a half. Okay. And this one is... One, yep. Because I don't want it too sweet. Two dashes of cherry bitters. And I'm going to actually add another ounce of vodka. Since I'm doing Alan John on that one, I would see with Alan John vodka. An ounce. Well, I'll do that at the end. Alrighty, I'm gonna do the syrup first. So I'm only gonna do a half. Half ounce. And I have some other stuff on the table here that I was uh, playing with, but I was gonna use, I, I, I make the coffee, a coffee drink too often, because that's my favorite, so I figured I'd do a little different. Now, while I'm doing, while I'm shaking this up, what is your favorite drink to make with your liquors? To, to, to my two makers here, first. Mm. Oh, uh, and by the way, I think it was like three ounces of booze, and that's been, Hey, I'm all about the one and done. <laughs> That's a question. Um, for me, you, you make a, uh, although I, I want to find out about this, this uh, banana finish, but... Um, oh, that sounds great. We do what we call the Henry Gats, and it's, uh, it's our gin... Gin lime, we, we make a jalapeno salt, which is jalapeno salt, um, shallots, uh, dried lime, uh, onion, things like that. Uh, and then close that door. 
and you know, we throw all that together, uh, put a little jalapeno in there, muddle it. I like spicier drinks. Um, like margaritas to me, like to me, all margaritas should be spicy. I, I don't understand if those margaritas can have to be spicy. Um, that's probably my favorite because it's got a little burn to it, but it, you can still taste the, the gins coming through and it has some citrus that you know kind of balances the two out. Okay. Man, I got a couple. Um, so we do an island meal with the guava. So, uh, so your standard meal with uh, sour, ginger, ginger beer, uh, vodka, and we throw uh, two ounces of pineapple juice in it. Absolutely refreshing. Nice. You mentioned margaritas. Um, we do a island, uh, what is it? Uh, a sweet heat island margarita. So it has uh, apple guayab in it with uh, tanteos, habanero tequila in it, and uh, pineapple and sour with it. Man, we've been getting so many hits on that on that uh, on that cocktail mix right there. It's beautiful. Nice. And chef. All. all right. Uh, I have so many different favorites. I gotta say, I'm gonna go classic, and uh, the last word is my all-time favorite cocktail. Um, and I think using the Fitzgerald, it's going to be absolutely perfect with the chartreuse and the lime um, and the maraschino liqueur. So I'm really excited to try that. Um, if I do a little twist, what I would do is add a little bit of cilantro and cucumber, muddle that in there, give it a nice little summery um, kind of touch to it. Um, I love cilantro. I think it goes really well with gin and tequilas. And I'll add a little vodka too. So again, giving that little island vibe to it will be fantastic too. Last word. Uh, Putting man down in New Orleans, uh, Daniel Victory. I think his bar moves more chartreuse than any, you know, any bar in America. And when you go there, you understand why. That man's all about chartreuse. So you want to talk about telling last word. <laughs> yeah, he's all on that. That's nice. It's nice. awesome. All right. So, for me, I'm I'm very basic. I just like vodka cran typically. <laughs> That's just me. That's mine. You know, and, and then I like to, and then I like to do this because this is actually bomb. Because I have not made this before. I create on the spot and, and challenge myself. It looks good. That is bomb. That is bomb. Not too sweet. A nice sweetness to it, but got that, that heat, to, that strength to it that I like. I don't like weak drinks. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but one of the things I wanted to get across, which I think I really appreciate you guys getting it across, is we have to work with each other, but we have to work hard. And we have to put in the work and the effort and make sure what we're doing is quality and good. And that way it makes it easy for us to come together and do business and grow. Because all boats rise with the rising tide. You know, so I love selling you brothers wine, uh, brothers liquors, and I love selling liquor and wine to you. So, because <laughs> you have to be selective in who you sell to, too. I mean, you got to make sure it's kept right, and especially with wine, is where it's kept right, and that you know you can have a bottle that's open and it's, if it's been there for a week and ain't sold, and they pour a, a glass of red that's been open for a week, it's bad. And if somebody leaves thinking your wine don't taste good, you know, yeah. or you know they make a, a horrible drink. With your liquor, they're like, oh, that wasn't good. You know, I don't mm -hmm. know if I like that liquor. But yeah. it's, it's, it's all about what you're making, who makes it, and the presentation as well. And yeah. Nelson, you guys do a great job, you and your staff and, you. and, and everybody. Um, and at, at Wachira Wines, you know, we have a flash sale. I have to mention that flash sale on our sparkling for retail. Um, so we have a flash sale today, only on Wednesday till midnight, uh, 1999. And then make sure we all come out on Friday and support Nelson at LMR and the pop-up Sober Mesa and get some Denord and Island John liquor and try, understand why these brothers do what they do. All three of them. Understand, and, and the food. What are the specials on the food for Friday? That's my question. <laughs> um, uh... I'm, I'm working on one one item, but another item will be a uh, 
beautiful Brussels sprout dish with uh, a pineapple sofrito vinaigrette. I made a uh, beautiful beer cheese, so something right, nice and rich, uh, light, tropical. There's a uh, tomato, sweet tomato chutney on there and a little bit of uh, jerk spices. So again, going to the island, but something more vegetarian. Um, on the meat dish, um, this is between two things, uh, jerk pork, which I just had in Jamaica a couple weeks ago, the first time, Ooh. and fell in love uh, with some Johnny Cake and plantains. Um, so it's either that or I'm doing a whole fish uh, item, which was in a cookbook that I was in. It's yeah. a beautiful casino with a uh, farro, uh, uh, kind of farro mixed with raisins and almonds, um, and sofrito, which is uh, a Dominican uh, marinade. It's really popular. And some, uh, some Dominican-style beans and plantains. So I got to decide one or the other. I don't want to get my kitchen slammed and stuff. You know? <laughs> they would be very mad with you. You say both. <laughs> <laughs> that all sounds amazing. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So what would you pair with that, with, with, with the, the fish dish? What would you pair with that? What I think the fish. Um, the gin? Yeah. Going towards the gin. Um, also, the, the Al John guava. We'll go oh, with the guava yeah. Too. The fruit notes, yeah. Yeah. And um, just a little lemon juice on the, on the fish. Some nice, uh, with the richness of the beans. And that guava flavor would be fantastic. And then the gin, if we do the gin, all those herbal citrus notes will be will cut down a lot of that richness and will go down really easily. Be fantastic, too. Okay. Now, if we do the jerk pork, that mixed blood. With some of that apple whiskey, ah. the apple liqueur is perfect, absolutely perfect. Now, see, that's what that's another one that I make. I, I love making that one when I when I do tastings. Uh, so it's the apple liqueur, the mixed blood whiskey. He has a drink he does with that, but I, then I use my cherry bitters with that as well. Yeah, and and that's about it. <laughs> and a little bit, of, a little bit, a little bit of club soda, and that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. Simple. yeah. It doesn't take much. Yeah. Yeah. As long as the product's good, it, it, again, you don't need to mask it so much, you know. It stands out for itself. So if anybody has any questions, uh, first for Chef, Chef Nelson, uh, I want each of you guys to say your, 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 uh, your, your website and everything else. Um, and I know for the last two, for both of the liquors, if you have any questions for distribution, for uh, getting the product, give us a call. If you want to just order something right now, call Nelson. <laughs> um, but go for it every guys uh, do your sign off let us know who you are where you're at and how to reach you alright start off so Chef Nelson Herman of Alamar Kitchen and Bar and Soda Mesa Cocktail Lounge in right here in Oakland, California um, much love to everyone please be safe uh, let's keep this movement going uh, there's real change actually happening for us so let's keep it, let's keep uh, lifting ourselves up and showing all our positives Let's stop being that angry stereotype that they always stereotype us with. Uh, you know, doing amazing things that we're all doing together and uplifting each other is going to take us farther than anything else. So, much love to all of you. Peace and love. Yeah. Totally agree. Hey again, Kevin John with Island John Vodka. Um, you, could, I, you guys can find us on social media at Island John Vodka, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, also, our website is islandjohn.com. That's I S L A N B J O N dot com. Um, yeah, man, it was just an honor to be part of this conversation, man, and to uh, curse to meet you virtually. Um, I've been throwing your uh, your um, what was it? Your fundraiser for your whole rebuild and you know refresh of your uh, your manufacturing plant, man. Hope all that's going well. That project's going well for you guys. Um, much respect on being the being the leader and trend center in our in our space, you know, for especially for the minority uh, folks, man. Um, Nelson, thank you so much for the support, brother. Um, definitely look forward to being the first spot my man Chad will take me to when I hit Oakland, <laughs> right? And um, yeah, man, I'm just honored to be part of this conversation, man, and be part of the movement that is currently in the market. And uh, hopefully this is just not a fluke, but it's something that we're all serious about. And as you said, man, keep up with each other and we can push forward. So much respect to both of y'all. Uh, yeah, every, everything I'll say has been said. Uh, I 
the utmost respect for everybody on this call. And, uh, you know, Kevin, like I uh, said before, for making a way in that market is, is tough. Um, and, you know, we're all trailblazers in our own way. And most of the people who got out there started had no idea that I was there. So I don't know how much I want to up for anybody. We all have to, to blaze our own trail and make our own way. And so I have much respect for anyone who does that because it's, it's not just about starting a business. Sometimes it's about starting an industry. And then sometimes it's also about starting a, uh, bridging a perception gap. And so that, that's tough for all It's a us. movement. I have a ton of respect for everyone who does it. Um, I think we are in a moment right now. The, we have a, we started with the Bunard Foundation, um, which is Bunard Foundation.org. We literally just uh, put together, and we did that. We raised three quarters of a million dollars, not for the North Pass Spirits, but for other black and brown owned businesses um, that were damaged in the unrest uh, in Minneapolis. You know, the, the North Pass Spirits is on the same block as the Third Precinct. Minneapolis Third Precinct was the mm-hmm. epicenter of uh, the first world war. Um, that's a, we're, we're right there. Um, so we experienced a little bit of damage, but you know we're going to be back. We're going to be fine. Uh, we want to make sure that we're supporting other black and brown businesses who don't necessarily have the, haven't gotten the press that we've received, and so we can turn that into dollars. We can get to them. We got over eleven thousand donors who who have given you know their hard earned money to towards that. I like to think that this is not a blip in the screen. Um, I want this. I hope, I know we all hope that we're living in a moment right now where a page is done. And I think we all are old enough and maybe cynical enough to know that that page only gets turned if there's a lot of people pushing on And so I, I hope that anyone who's watching this, and I know the people who are on this just by their example, are helping to push that page. Um, if anyone wants to find us, first of all, if you want to buy our stuff, we're talking to my man Chad. <laughs> right, because yeah. he has it, and, and Nelson, I cannot wait to get to your spot. Uh, you know, next time I'm, I'm up in NorCal, I want to make sure that this thing through. Uh, you can find us online, do not crash spirits.com. That's do no d u n o r d crash spirits.com. Uh, we obviously have a foundation, and we like to support there. Um, and just keep on keeping on. I mean, the best thing that we can do is don't let it die. Keep talking. Or whatever, man. Going. Cool. And I am Chadwick Spell with Wachira Wines and WS Distributions. The uh, Wachira Wines, the big five of Safari of Wine. Uh, we have five different varietals. And FYI to everybody here, we'll be coming out with something real soon uh, that Rosé you've been waiting on. Um, so that, that, that's Safari Rosé. Um, and WS Distributions has things to. These two gentlemen at the bottom as well, um, and and what about longtime customers since we really started, Nelson? Um, it takes a village to do a distribution. Literally, we have to have people that we carry that are quality. We have to have people that are buying. So we have a whole bunch of restaurants in Oakland that, um, and thank God, is some of them doing as well as Nelson is doing and, and transitioning, but some of them haven't. Um, so it's like we all are pivoting at the same time and as a distributor I'm telling any restaurants you know let us know if you want to see us and we'll look at what we can do and then any any makers liquor wine or beer of color and it does not do not have to be black and locals that if you're in the Bay Area we're, 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 we're here for you if you're not big and you can't go to a big distributor um, but if you are looking for two makers of color because it's really hot right now and you want to get some really good product hit us up for the nord and alan john vodka and we are here for you and hit us up and these brothers on here are doing business and and leading the way and if you have any questions and and i'm gonna put you guys out there if you need a mentor (laughs) (laughs) mentees have to put in work people don't realize that mentees have to put in work but I've learned something from each one of these gentlemen. And I've met both of these gentlemen through other people or at events. So I met Kevin through a friend. You know, I met literally by drinking the product of a booth behind me, which was Chris at a booth behind me in New Orleans at Essence two years ago. You know, I, drink, I tasted his product. I'm like, okay, I got to have this. I bought some bottles, brought them back, had them on my bar, and I basically communicated with this brother throughout. So I brought him in, and we started carrying him this year. 
But I've been carrying carrying Kevin now for almost two years now, right? Yeah. So you know, this brother stuck with us. He's there, and we're moving. So thank you guys. Really appreciate you. Um, and Marcel just joined us on Facebook, um, and we're going to be posting this out. And join us next week when we're going to have a new black winemaker that is on our site already. We were fully launching her now with all her products, Miss Paula P. Harrell Wines um, out of Oakland, California. So next Wednesday and our Wine Down Wednesday, join us with Paula. And to all you gentlemen, thank you very much. And God bless, stay safe, and take care of them babies. Yeah. 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 Yeah.